steal my laundry detergent? Hope you like the bleached clothes look. This happened when I was in college back in 2011. I lived in a four-story dorm that was all guys, about 40 to 60 per floor. Each floor had one laundry room with three washers and three dryers, plus cubbies to store your laundry, bag, soap while you were washing. A few months into the semester, I noticed my laundry detergent was disappearing faster than it should be. Not a huge deal, but mildly annoying. What made it a bigger deal was that whoever was stealing my detergent would also take my clothes out of the washer and leave them on the floor so that they could wash their clothes. This pushed me over the line. I would typically do a load while I went to class, not classes, so this made finding the perp tricky. Then a golden idea hit me. I went to Walmart and bought a new jug of laundry detergent, the same brand that I always get, but I also bought extra strength bleach. I poured half the detergent from my new bottle into the old bottle and replaced it with the extra strength bleach. That next day, I did my laundry as usual, but left the new and improved detergent in the cubby instead of my regular stuff, then I waited. After class, sure enough my clothes were sitting in a pile on the floor, soaking wet and the whole laundry room smelled of bleach. Just what I wanted. Fast forward the next week. Every Monday night we had a floor meetings, where we basically talked about rules and crap as a floor. In walks this guy, we'll call him Bob, wearing a newly bleached hoodie and ruined jeans. Bob drops his newly ruined pile of clothes on the floor and starts spouting off about how someone owed him money for his ruined clothes. The whole floor bursts out in laughter. Apparently, I wasn't the only one Bob was stealing soap from. He didn't get another sentence out of his mouth before our RA told him stealing detergent was still a crime, so it was his own damn fault. Enjoy your bleached clothes, Bob. Our next story was posted by user PM me your moogles, titled X tries to bully me with custody agreement, so I play dirty. My ex-husband Brian was and is a toxic controlling narcissist. Classic case. Our divorce was very bitter, but I tried to be fair, splitting custody and giving him decision-making authority under the assumption that he would be a better father than he was a husband. Things went well for about a year. I got a new boyfriend who was great to both me and my kids and wanted to be involved in their life. When he found out my new boyfriend Tom was going to be attending my kids' fall festival at school, he went off the deep end. He abruptly decided that he wasn't going to watch the kids while I worked anymore. He also refused to let my kids or family watch the kids and said that he wanted to meet them first. But then he would refuse to do so and claimed he would sue me for going against the custody agreement since he had the decision making authority. That was if I got a babysitter he didn't approve. I lost two days at work scrambling to find any place available which was difficult because of the school's location they attend. He began asking the kids to call him every night, which is fine, but if we were eating or busy doing something and I told him it would have to be later when they call, he would rage and threaten to sue me. He began asking me at all times where I was with the kids. One day I went into work for three hours to clean up some things I missed due to a storm. I left the kids with Tom since waking them up at 4.30am seemed needless. When Brian found out, he raged and threatened to sue me. He threatened to apply for child support, even though we split custody. He raged about every little thing. He didn't bring the kids to the Christmas school play because he knew Tom would be there. He fought me over medical appointments for the kids and refused to pay his share because he didn't agree to the appointment and of course would sue me. He wouldn't let me have the kids during this time, even to let them attend birthday parties or sleepovers with friends or family something we had been doing for each other with no issue. This went on for about two months before I snapped. I hate when parents are willing to hurt their kids over their own egos. He kept threatening to take me to court and I was fed up with the empty threat. So first, I wanted to make sure he couldn't afford to fight me in court. Brian was on food stamps. I knew it was only because he was claiming to pay his ex-wife rent. She still owns half the house and he still owed her half the value. I sent his ex-wife a message 
asking her if she was getting rent from him, and she said no. I sent that letter to DCF, and they closed his food stamp card and sued him for fraud. Then, his ex-wife turned around and sued him for her value of the house, since he was claiming to have been paying her all along. Then I sued him to modify the custody agreement and take out all the things he was trying to use to harass me. I had screenshots of every nasty thing that he sent me. I had a letter typed by his lawyer stating he was looking for another job, since I wasn't paying him and that's why he couldn't watch the kids. So, if he tried to get child support, I could prove he was capable of finding more income. I had medical records and receipts showing I had paid for everything for the last year for the kids' health needs. I had records of things he said to the kids about me. I had pictures of them looking filthy when picking them up from his house. I had receipts of everything I had spent on the kids for the past year. He folded pretty quickly, cannot harass me anymore, and is still paying off his first ex-wife. God, that was a basket case, that one. And our next story was posted by user The Only Says, titled Supervisor Belittles Me, I Make Him Suffer. Strap in guys, this is a long one. Also note, all names have been changed for privacy reasons. For those of you who don't know about my old job from the I don't work here story, I got a job back when I was about 19 or 20 years old at my town's public hospital in their food service department. I stayed with the place for three years, but it has gone down as one of the worst jobs I've ever had for many reasons. Bitchy nursing staff, insane hours, overworking me and co-workers, and just overall a very toxic work environment. I went in as a socially awkward girl with no spine for conflict or standing up for myself and came out a much stronger person because of this place. But there is a particular series of events that led to that. Let me set it up for you. My official title was a food service aide, or aide for short. My job I was hired for was to collect dirty trays and dishes from carts on their respective floors, wash all of the dishes that came into my dish room and put them into the dish machine to be sanitized, before I let the dishes dry and store them where they needed to go. Then, at the end of the night, I would break down the machine and clean the filters of leftover food and drain the water tanks of dirty soap water before going home. Over time, I became well acquainted with the dish machines we had. First one was 20 plus years old, and finally died on us. Rest in peace, Big Bertha. And I could troubleshoot a problem with it, since I like machines enough to learn as much as I can about them. My boss took notice of this, and how hard I worked in the dish room every day. So, he began to have me learn about the other parts of the departments, so I could fill in whenever someone called in. Cooking on the grill and serving food in the cafeteria, cashiering, helping to prepare food trays for patients, learning about different diets and their orders from the doctors, restocking floors for patient snacks and drinks, and finally, deliver food to patient rooms. If that seems like a lot for one person, it was. Due to staff cutbacks, we were short a lot of manpower, so a couple of us had to learn as much as possible to keep us afloat. Now, on to the story. I had already been working in this small hospital for just over a year at the time, and I was determined to stay at least a few years to help make my work history look pretty good in the stance of longevity. That, and pure stubbornness I guess. In that time, my boss hired a new supervisor for our department, who will now be called Chad. At first, Chad seemed like a pretty nice guy, and me, being the awkward dork that I am, tried to help him fit in with the others at work. I told jokes to him, got him to open up a bit to the others, and soon he was able to have a conversation rather easily. All was good! Then he passed his three mark probation period, and was no longer being constantly watched by boss. Chad turned into an insufferable jerk. He began to bark orders as if he owned the kitchen, demanding to know why certain things weren't being done his way, and overall was slowing down the production tremendously for everyone. Not to mention, he himself was a lazy expletive. When there would normally be two people washing dishes, if one of them was called in, it would mean whoever was there had to pick up the slack and do it all by themselves. Chad wouldn't lift a finger to help. 
unless he knew Boss was going to be in the kitchen and not in his office by HR. And even then, Chad didn't know what he was doing. And to top it all off, he made it a point to take jabs at me in front of the others, trying to make me look stupid because I was the youngest member of the department. It felt like I had gone back to high school, being the quiet nerdy girl who was picked on for liking things out of the norm, and being laughed at for being weird. I liked to draw, love anime, and play video games. So when the topic of, what are you going to do on your days off, came up, I usually said something like, I'm going to relax at home and play insert game after doing some chores. Then Chad would make a remark like, Wow, you play video games? You must not have a life. Jerk. It got to the point where I was so fed up with Chad's bullcrap that I began to grow a bit of a backbone. I was fed up with constantly having anxiety working with him and hiding in the bathroom sobbing during my shift when he was making my life a living hell. I began to make cracks back at him and get into yelling matches with him in the kitchen. No sound escaped the doors once they were closed, so no one outside the department heard us. He couldn't fire me, only tell my boss and sign a write-up, which he never did because he saw it as a way of losing to me in our arguments. Anytime he made jokes at me, I threw them right back, and when I knew he was doing something wrong, I would fight back, tell him how it was supposed to be done. This went on for a few months, and then, the final straw. As a dishwasher, you are supposed to take temperatures in the dish machine to ensure that it's working properly. It's supposed to reach a certain temperature when washing dishes to ensure everything is being sanitized properly. If not, there could be an outbreak in the hospital from germs or mold. All the temperatures and times were recorded on a sheet and placed in a folder in the dietitian's office by the dish room. I was making my usual rounds of taking temps when I noticed the machine was reading about 20 degrees in the red cooler than where it was supposed to be. I shut down the machine and began to drain the water tanks. This was my way of troubleshooting if the tanks had just not been drained in a while, or if something was seriously wrong with the machine. As I was draining the water, Chad comes in and sees me doing this. He was furious and begins to rant. What are you doing? We still have piles of dishes to wash. Temps were low, gotta drain the water and see if it fixes it. I think, how the hell is that going to fix it? You're just wasting time. Me, visibly annoyed, if you let me finish, I'm seeing if morning shift drained the water or not. If not, then it'll only take 10 minutes to fill the tanks back up. I know the tanks were drained. I drained them myself. I get up and look him in the eye, knowing he was lying since he always asked me to take care of the machines at closing. Prove it. Show me how. He was about to yell again when my co-worker Dean in the diet office peers into the dish room. Chad's face turns red and he gives me a death glare before storming off. I continued to work on the machine and once the tanks refilled, I initialed all of my temps and times on the sheet before returning it back to the office. The day goes by and after a hellish time on the floors serving patients, I was in the middle of my cleaning duties with the cook and Dean. I get called by Chad, saying that the boss wanted to talk to us. So, after making sure the dish machine was cleaned, I walked with him to the boss's office. There, boss begins to tell me that Chad had given him evidence that I was slacking on my duties, and that I was not taking temperatures like I was supposed to for the dish machine. He said that thankfully, Chad took the temps, but if I wanted to keep from getting in trouble and to keep the department from getting into legal trouble, I needed to step up and be a team player. He said that I was getting a verbal warning, but if I did this again, I would receive a write-up or possible suspension. My jaw hits the floor, and even though Chad is smiling smugly in the corner, I chose not to argue with my boss and head back to the department, defeated and fighting back tears. I was sure that I took the temps, and when I checked the book, I was shocked to see what I found. My temps were still in there, and the times that I took them, but the idiot actually photocopied the page, whited out my initials, and replaced them with his initials. He then traced over the pre-existing handwriting to make it look legit, with his initials. He made it look like I had not taken temps all day during my shift, 
I racked my brain wondering how the hell he could have gotten away with it and no one noticing him. And then it hit me. He must have done it in the diet office when no one was around, due to dinner trays being made under the dietitian's supervision. I was ticked, and I began to bide my time for an opportunity for revenge. It came a month later. Now, since we are a hospital in a small town, it was normal for us to get catering orders for the members of HR and upper management for when they had meetings upstairs. Those orders were easy, because they usually wanted chips, pre-made sandwiches, and soda for about 10 to 15 people. However, we occasionally got huge catering orders for district meetings, and that was when we would bust out the catering dishes. Large white immaculate plates, silverware, glass cups, punch bowl, food serving plates, desserts, tea, and cloth napkins were usually used for these events. And even though it was a lot more dishes for the understaffed aides, it was pretty simple. This particular order was for the CEO, his workers, HR, doctors, head nurses, and the higher-ups who owned the hospital's contract. The estimated amount to be served was around 150 people, since many members of the board were going to show up as well. Usually, we got the huge order a week in advance, so the supervisor can arrange the schedule to have more bodies on deck to help. Chad, of course, schedules only me to be the afternoon dishwasher, meaning I had to clean the dishes for the entire hospital and the catering order. This was my chance for revenge. As always, Chad did not lift a finger to help me in the dish room, and the entire room was completely full of dirty dish carts from the floors. The hospital had about 95 patients that were eating, and morning shift had been running behind, so I had both breakfast and lunch dishes to clean. It wouldn't have been so bad if we didn't have to take apart the trays one by one to make sure no needles or blood were on the trays, and then clean each piece. I was stressed beyond belief, because I knew that 150 people catering order would be due any time now. But I kept myself calm and tried to keep doing my job. A few hours go by, and Chad calls out to me to shut off the dish machine. It was very loud, and tells me to go and pick up the catering order. Instead of arguing with him, I decided to do it, and asked if he was going to help me. He gives me a big shit-eating grin, and then tells me, I have better things to do. You can do it alone. Perfect. So, despite me being exhausted, sweaty, and have a wet uniform from my dishwasher apron with holes in it, I made my way to the management floor. I scope out the damage and realize I'm going to have to make two or more trips across the hospital to clean this up. I begin to pick up the dishes in the meeting room, take off the tablecloths, and stack them on one of the two long carts. While I'm about to clean up the food serving table, I look over to see the door that led into the HR office was open slightly, and a few women were laughing and commenting on how good the pork roast was at the meeting. I knew they were within earshot of me. It was showtime. In this moment, I was thankful for being clumsy and having sprained my ankles so much growing up, because it was so easy to do this. While I was cleaning up, I deliberately tipped on a chair that was left slightly out and went crashing onto the floor. I sprained my ankle doing this, which was what I was planning, and the glass layer I was carrying fell and crashed to the floor. The two women in HR heard this and rushed over to see me laying on the floor with shattered glass all around me and a few minor cuts on my arms, and they rush over to help me up. We'll call them Jane and Jill. Are you okay? I'm alright, I say in the brink of tears. Are you sure? Here, let's get you in a chair. Th thank you. I'm sorry, I I'm so sorry, please don't tell my boss. They then help me up into a chair, and when they check me over to see I'm in tears, they begin to ask me questions. Where's your help? It's just me right now. I'm supposed to pick this up and take it back to wash them. Seriously? All by yourself? Why didn't you get someone to help you? Oh, we're short a dishwasher today. I'm trying as best I can, but I keep falling more and more behind. At this point, I begin to cry uncontrollably. All of the stress and emotions I had bottled up from the past few months from working with Chad and the department had finally built up so much 
that I let loose my repressed emotions on these two ladies. I told them about the understaffing, the insane amount of overtime I and my co-workers were getting, how I was the only one doing dishes that day, how my supervisor refused to help me, and how much stress I had been in. I wasn't faking any of it. I was just waiting for the right moment to finally break down and tell the right people about all of the negative feelings that I had. Needless to say, the two were shocked at my breakdown. Once I calmed down, they told me they wanted to see just how bad things had gotten in the dish room, if it was as bad as I said that it was. They would take the case to my boss. So, with their help, they helped me get back to the dish room with the carts of dirty dishes and I held onto the cart while limping down the hall. Once we got to the staff door for my department's dish room, I told them to wait outside while I pushed the carts in. Confused, they comply and hug the wall, waiting to see what happens next. I slipped into the dish room with the carts like nothing happened, and Chad comes in and glares at me. At this point, the room was completely full of dishes, carts, and now two catering carts that took up a large amount of space. You could barely walk through the damn place. Then we begin our normal yelling match, all the while the door was left slightly open behind me. About time you came back! What took you so long? I was picking up an order by myself, what did you expect, Chad? I was expecting you to do your job! Clearly you can't! Look at all of these trays! I just picked up and began to work on the lunch when you told me to get to the catering. Did you do any of these while I was gone? Gesturing to the room? No! I had my own work to do, you're just too slow. How the hell am I supposed to wash dishes when I'm picking up the catering order? Not my problem, do your job or you'll get a write up. With that, he leaves and I go back out to meet Jane and Jill. Their faces are filled with anger and disgust from what they just listened to, and they reassure me that this was going to stop, now. We walk back to the management floor, and as I limp into boss's office behind them, the two ladies began to go off at him about Chad and what he had been doing. Confused, Boss had no idea what they were talking about and looked to me for an explanation. However, Jill and Jane told him to follow us and we walked back to the department. At this point, my ankle was throbbing with intense pain since I sprained it pretty good. When we got to the dish room and opened the door, my boss was appalled at the amount of work that was left for me. And when he heard that there was no second or even third backup dishwasher scheduled, he almost lost it. He called for Chad, and the four of us waited in the dietitian's office. While we waited, I told them I didn't want him to lose his job over this, but I wanted him to know how I felt being left with so much work. I really felt this way, but a huge part of me just wanted to see him suffer. When Chad walked in to see me and three powerful people with me, his face turns pale but his normal shit-talking face is replaced with one of fake concern and confusion. Though his act fails as Boss began to demand why he didn't schedule someone to help me, he told Boss that he had been helping me as much as he could today, but Jane and Jill stop him and repeat what he had told me before. The Boss is disgusted, and he looks to Chad after discussing the situation more. This is what's going to happen. OP hurt herself, cleaning up the catering so she's going home for the day and will be off for two days. But she can't go home, we're short-staffed. That was your fault, not hers. She's not going to suffer because you screwed up. But, but, also, I don't care how much overtime this accrues, you are staying after. What for? Tonight, you're going to be the dishwasher, all by yourself. You're going to wash every single one of those dishes and the catering order. And since it's almost time for dinner to be served to patients, I guess you will be doing those too. If you leave anything for morning crew to clean up, and if the department isn't cleaned like it's supposed to, consider yourself fired. Once he said that, I was sent home for the day, and the three continued to tear Chad a new one as I limped out the door. When I got back to my car, I was smiling so much that my cheeks were hurting all the way back to my house. Epilogue after I got back from my two-day break, I noticed that there were empty slots open to the schedule that said new hire, but no hours. It seemed that after the talk, HR decided to grant us new hiree slots to help with our understaffing, but the slots were still empty. I also found out something that was just icing on my beautiful revenge cake. 
I found out from Dean that Chad had to stay until about midnight cleaning the entire load of dishes that he let pile up. And the next day, he even helped the one person he scheduled for morning dishes to clean up breakfast, since he scheduled himself to work the morning shift. But the cherry on top was that when there were three large catering orders, Chad had to set up and then clean up the orders from then on, since he was convinced it could all be done by one person. So, when he was cleaning a large catering order by himself in the dish room, and I walked by it about to get ready to serve dinner to the patient's rooms, he stops me. He then asks if I minded staying back and helping him, since there was so much of the catering order left to clean up. I smile and said simply, Not my problem, do your job. Boom. Well, that was indeed a long one. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, links for my Instagram, Patreon, Discord, and Twitter are in the description below. Guys, if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to hit me up in the comments below or in any of the social media platforms. And, as always, have a great day. Bye.